This is the 5 minute guide to the Stalingrad class battle cruisers of the Soviet Navy. So, the Stalingrad class, well, these are an interesting design from the old USSR, mirroring the Alaska class of the United States and the B-65 class of the Japanese Empire, uh, as well as a certain pet project of Winston Churchill in the UK. However, of all these ships, only the Alaska class would actually see service. All the ships shared a common function, which was essentially a reinvention of the original role of the battle cruiser back in the early 1900s, which was to kill off enemy cruisers. In this case, the designs all share certain commonalities thanks to the restrictions of various naval treaties, having ostensibly capped the displacement and armament of light and heavy cruisers for some time. So the solution for a ship capable of overwhelming such vessels in a fight was relatively universal. In the Russians' case, however, they had started out with a design similar to that which Germany had envisioned for the Scharnhorst class originally. This was the Kronstadt class, being a large and fast vessel armed with three twin 15-inch gun turrets, albeit that the German design had battleship-grade armour, whilst the larger Russian ship was slightly faster but more lightly armoured. Various issues with the Soviet shipbuilding industry and the cost of the ships, however, meant that a smaller and less expensive version was desired. And so in 1941, the Stalingrad class was designed. Initially, the ship was supposed to be armed similarly to a heavy cruiser with eight 8 inch guns in four twin turrets, alongside a dozen 100mm guns, a dozen 37mm guns, and a single triple torpedo launcher. Because why not? But with a 36 knot top speed, and critically, armour protection against incoming 8 inch fire. These latter requirements meant that the ship would have weighed over twice what a treaty cruiser did but the designers recommended increasing the main battery to 8.7 inch guns along with more anti-aircraft firepower at the expense of protection and speed. This enhanced version was proposed with more and larger main guns and more secondary guns but no torpedoes in 1943 with its primary purpose being carrier escort. But this was superseded in 1944 by a design that still ultimately aimed at cruiser killing, but was now specifically targeted at the escort groups of enemy carrier strike forces. Various designs were submitted for this, but the general trend had the ship getting gradually larger and larger, and by the early 1950s the design had changed almost beyond recognition, with a much more raked bow and a final standard displacement of over 36,000 tonnes, which was more than a pre-war treaty battleship. Now for this, you got a design that, ironically enough, closely resembled the actual service design for the Scharnhorsts, with three triple turrets, two forward and one aft, carrying very powerful 61 caliber 12 inch guns, six twin 5.1 inch dual purpose guns, 24 45mm anti-aircraft guns in quadruple mounts, and 40 25mm anti-aircraft guns, also in quadruple mounts. Now by this point in history, surface and air search radar and gunnery radar would also be fitted alongside radar jammers. Now, these ships were fast, designed for 35.5 knots, but not especially well protected, with an inclined 7.1 inch belt providing limited protection against 8 inch fire, uh, but full protection against 6 inch fire, reflecting its anti-cruiser role, as opposed to the older Scharnhorst's ability to survive an encounter with a capital ship, at least for a short period of time. An alternate variant, armed with both cruise and ballistic missiles, was proposed, with the missile launch tubes replacing the 12-inch guns, but issues with missile preparation time of about three hours and stability of the launch platform itself meant this gun didn't get anywhere past the drawing board. Three ships were actually started, the Stalingrad, the Moskva, and the Kronstadt, since at this point the actual Kronstadt class had been cancelled. Practical work on all three ships started in 1952, but with Stalin's death in 1953, they were all cancelled, with the Stalingrad's hull being launched in 1954 at about 70% completeness. In May 1955, the hull was towed out of harbour, only to be driven ashore by high winds in Sevastopol Bay, about 50 metres from the shoreline. As a practically empty partial hull, it couldn't be refloated by lightening the ship, as there was nothing in the ship that you could take out and the rocks underneath meant that digging the ship out was also out of the question. The cruisers Molotov and Kirsch tried to tow the ship into deeper water, but that didn't work either, at which point some bright spark decided to use explosives to create shockwaves that in theory would push the ship off into deeper water. Somewhat unsurprisingly, this just ended up blowing up a series of holes in the side of the ship and causing more flooding, which meant it was even more stuck than it had been before, so good going there.
Now, after all these attempts, someone decided it might actually have been a good idea to inspect the ship and see why it was so stuck, and they discovered hundreds of bits of the launching cradle still stuck to the underside of the ship, which rather explained the intractability of the situation. Now, the nearby capsizing of the ex-Italian Giulio Cesare, which was now operating under the name of Nova Rossic, delayed matters somewhat, and in 1956 she was finally towed off, repaired, and immediately put into service as a target for anti-shipping missiles and other similar weapons. After taking dozens of hits of various kinds, the Hulk was scrapped probably around 1962. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.